yeah, 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 Oh, I'm I'm really good, man. I mean, I mean, first of all, that edible kicked in pretty good. <laughs> like I, I, I'm, I'm like floating right now. Lovely, uh, lovely. We have an environment change. It's beautiful, if you, uh, if I might say so myself. No. Yeah, yeah. I came across a, a, a pretty dope company, uh, ran ran by a guy named Tom. So this is your company. Oh, what's Love name? It. What's the name of the company? Chicago Podcast Studio. It, it's fresh. Fresh. This is fresh. And, and, and you know what? We talked about this before. So we did this on the last podcast we had. But you could tell that the dude that we did it with, he didn't really do it. Yeah. He, he was like, he's like, he like kind of threw it, was it a, together. It was a makeshift, but this is his shit. You could tell like, okay, this guy has a, a, a vision. Yeah. And I could tell by the ad that I saw, I was like, oh, that's kind of like the style, you know, it's yeah, clean yeah, cut, it's yeah. modern, it's new, da, da, da. And he would do the switching. What do you call it when you do, is it the switching? Yeah, because before, remember, I had to go and, and clip piece by piece, and that's just like, it's so much easier to have like that. Yeah. And then I don't got to think about it. I could just you, live you, my life. You solve the pain points. Ran, ran, so man. So, <laughs> so how you been, man? What you been up to? I've been lovely, man. Actually, today, probably, what time is it, 11, 12? And about, about one, I got uh, my second comic book due. Okay. So okay. that should be right on time. Get that. Um, I'm going to get that animated, then get that. We're turning these into NFTs next. So I'm about to get into that market. But the everything is looking plush, man. Hey, so talk to me about the NFTs, man. Are we going to get into Let, NFTs right into, now? Let's get into like, NFTs. Okay. All right. So, shit, how are we going to start it? Let's get into it. I'm ready. <laughs> all right. So first we of all. Crypto, I, NFTs. Wait, I am not a financial advisor. Yeah, that. <laughs> This is good. not financial good. advice. I love that. That was funny. That's funny. <laughs> no, no, but but seriously, it's something that I'm trying to like learn I'm about. I'm ready. I'm in. I'm, and, I've been going crazy on it too. And so. listen, it, I, like I don't, I don't know nothing. Literally, do do not take anything that I say. Literally, whatever I say, think differently. Just do the opposite of what I say. <laughs> but I know that it stands for non fungible token. Correct. And what I believe it means is that if something's fungible. It's it, it's it's easy to swap. For instance, like a dollar bill, mm -hmm. I can switch a dollar. If you had a dollar and I had a dollar, and mm -hmm. we just switched it, it, it wouldn't matter because it's fungible. Something that's non fungible where it can't. So, like for instance, a dollar bill signed by Michael Jordan. Right. Like there's only one Exclusive. of those. Exclusive. Exclusivity. That's what the NFT is. Correct. Right. Correct. It's like a dig. So it's like a digital, a digital version of that. Yeah, it's like a digital certificate of authentic authenticity. Yeah. Yes. Once, once I'm like, oh, that's kind of dope. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna be able to do that for everything. Every single thing, but it's and it's gonna change the way I think. I think about it even bigger. Like, man, it's gonna change the way we actually have production. So I'm thinking about shipping, and things that we have as assets now are all things that we that are physical. But if what if we come to a world which is gonna be where most of our assets that we really find valuable are digital, what type of industries are gonna like not be you know around for that? You know what I mean? And that's kind of where it's going. But let me let me back back a little bit and kind of explain my version of NFTs and all this stuff. But I'll kind of it's kind of this way that I've been thinking about it lately. <clears throat> so I'll do it like this. I'll play it in three different ways. You got stocks, you got crypto, and you got NFTs, right? So stocks. Stocks is like it's our version of owning a part of somebody else's vision, somebody else's company. So Coca-Cola. I can own a piece of Coca-Cola, right? That's a stock. Crypto is like I can own a piece of currency. So I got block, or oh, excuse me, I got um, Ethereum, I got Bitcoin, I got Crow, all this other stuff. I can own a type of money. So it's the same thing like a stock, but it's just a money form. NFT, you pretty much, as the digital creator or whatever you have, or the holder, become the stock. So now that you own Cares None or a product of Cares None, you put that as an NFT, mm. and now you sell it to somebody. They own that now. You sold it to them, but they can resell it to somebody else, and you still get ten percent of whatever that resale is. So now you become the stock, right? Or whatever you put, you know, on there. So that's kind of how I break down the crypto and or the NFT crypto stock kind of conglomeration, if you will. Yeah, because it, it's a it's an industry that, and it's it's about to be the industry, right? So let me ask you this: Do you how 
when will it be officially accepted by everybody? I think it's coming there, and you know why? And I just put my, I just took out all my stocks from my actual, my actual stocks and put them into crypto. Yes, sir. <clears throat> from my real estate <laughs> shit to all this other stuff. I think but, everyone's um, doing that, bro. So crypto.com just bought the naming license to the Staples Center for the next 20 years, right? And they also bought the, some naming license or some stuff for the UFC as well. And they also just signed the biggest insurance deal in history, I think something like that. So like this stuff is about to be a real big play in the way, but it's, it's crypto.com, they serve as like an exchange. So we're, it's gonna make it easier for us to exchange our fiat, our actual USD for coinage. And then it's gonna, you know, and they actually have a USD coin that's worth right, a dollar. Right. So it's just a different system. It's rather, called a stable coin. Exactly. So it's all, <laughs> right. Rather than it, all it is, y'all, is just rather than us, this is how it works. When you use a company like a stock, like a Coca Cola, or a business or a, or a government, they determine what money is worth. When you own, when you have it in coins and stuff like this, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, we own the stocks. So we determine what that money is worth. Mm. They don't like the government doesn't determine like this is this is the value of this dollar now. This is the value of that now. The inflation, all this other stuff. So you all have the play on on the value of that dollar on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin can go up if you all invest in it. Right. And you all can decide to universal income, whatever we all put into the contracts. You know what I mean? Right. So now what do you theoretically what do you say to the people who say well, you think the government is going to let y'all come in there and mess with our nice little honey pot? Like, we good That's over here. Well, first of all, the government, you can't... It's a government, y'all. It's people. It's not It's not a... It's, <laughs> I don't... I mean, I, them people get, like, like big guns. That's... Okay, guns. That's what people, if you're talking physical <laughs> guns, yeah, really we can talk guns. that. Yeah, you can talk guns if you want to talk saying, guns. No, That's so fine. my point is, if the government is like, all right, the people out of line, we about to shut it down. Yeah, but it ain't... It ain't... This ain't people out of line. This is a... This is data. This is just a data system that's a trusted system to show that everything, every transaction that happens is proven. That's it. It ain't nothing outside of that. So which is, like, when, in the system we have now, we money can come up and we don't know where the fuck, or it can be taken and we don't know where it's why right, or anything. Right, Government right, just right. raise prices and we don't fucking know why. Exactly. And we got no say so in it because we don't right. own the actual dollar. If you have Bitcoin, you own the actual Bitcoin. So you have more say in ownership. That's why stocks is different and all that stuff from the crypto. Because you have actual ownership in this kind right. of money now versus the USD, you don't have that ownership. You have it as an exchange, but you don't have it as an ownership. And, and another thing, and cool it's not giving you any percentage back. You actually, oh, I'm sorry to cut you no, off. No, you good. You actually own on some of these coins. You actually have ownership in the coin, so you get interest for owning the coin. You don't get interest for having twenty dollars. Nope. You don't get interest uh, wait, just for uh, having twenty dollars. As a matter of fact, you lose value. You did, my point exactly, and that's the government making you lose right, that value right. because they are changing that. Right, but by design, right? Right, by design. By design, like they, not, I'm they not saying they're evil. It's just that's the design of it. That's the design. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, and I, and I think the one thing cool about Bitcoin, at least, is that there will never be more than the amount of Bitcoin ever, which I believe is twenty one million. Mm -hmm. So there, it, it can't inflate because whatever percentage you have of it, you will always have that percentage of it ever. Right. Whereas with fiat currency, they could just keep adding inflation. And then so your $100 now will be worth 90 something dollars. As we can see with like with gas, right? Everything's going up. So it's like, Got oh, I kind of like the fact that it can't, it's, I forgot the word, but it, it's no, no more than 21 million. Right. Uh, scarcity. It. Scarcity. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so, how it, yeah. It's a hey, this the crypto world. It's like whoa, and it still feels early. Yeah, it's like, our time though. I think this is our generation, at least, to be the ones to get into this and just take it because it's so new. We can actually make it to where we what we want. Right. And you know they got the whole metaverse shit happening anyway. So all that is I'm gonna be crypto based. The, hey, you, you, are you, you fucking with the metaverse? It's ownership. So yeah, it's NFT ownership, bro. I'm gonna be, yes, absolutely. I'm gonna have residual ownership. Do you based think? Off the product do you that think that is? Uh, how long until it gets to like? You ever seen Ready Player One? Yeah, I just watched I, it a couple months ago. Okay, right. Actually, <clears throat> so you, and I was reading a book. So you remember how dope that movie was, right? Like, yeah. damn. To, how long until we get to that? Yeah. When do you think if you had to make a guess? I, I don't know what they're doing. You think in our, I don't in know our timeline? They, yeah, I think so. So before we go, I think it's gonna be within the next ten, probably. I don't think it's that far off. Oh, damn! You, we gonna be in Ready Player One in ten years? That's a, that's a I big. I can see bet. that. I can see that. Oh, they're putting sixty. At least Facebook alone is putting sixty billion a I year know. towards it. So all you got to do is put energy towards it. 
which is in the form of money. Yeah. Like that, and they, and they, they got a lot of it. <laughs> exactly. So they, they have a vision. If you have an imagination that big and you have the money towards it, it's gonna you're gonna you're gonna put it together. That's all we've ever done is put energy towards our imagination. Now, now that's actually a good point. Actually, this is something I did did want to talk about this episode, Tom. This is, you want to, I actually did want to talk about this. What up? I'm reading this book called The Power of Concentration. Woo. Power. Right. <laughs> and it's like that's it really, that's the key, right? Is if you can concentrate your energy into something, if you laser focus it, oh, my fault. <laughs> if I, I'm like, I felt it too. <laughs> if you laser focus your energy and concentrate on anything, you will get results. And a lot of times you'll get results faster than you think that you would because you've concentrated on it. For sure. But, but concentration takes mental energy, right? To sit down and concentrate on something. If you can like teach yourself and, and learn how to concentrate, you almost can get whatever you want in life, but you're just gonna have to concentrate on it. And sometimes shit happens and it'll make you lose concentration. So then how, how quick do you get back into full concentration? You know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then and look at, I'm like <laughs> looking at my life now, even in a conversation, like are you concentrating on the conversation? Are you concentrating? And I'm like, holy shit, that's a, you don't realize how much you're not concentrating. And I think the, the people who have mastered the art of concentration yeah. are the ones that typically do shit. Mm -hmm. The ones who can have sustained, long, prolonged concentration on, on, on something. Like to be, to be completely mindful and focused on and something. Like, and, for, and you do that for as long as you can. That is the people, those are the people who crush at life. So the key is to teach yourself how to concentrate. And that's what I'm working on, and I think that, and for long periods of time, because the stick to right? Yeah, yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't, that's like our biggest problem. Yeah. We all start something, then it doesn't go right or whatever, and then we stop. And then, or we give, and, just, and then we'll, we're smart, we'll talk ourselves into thinking we had an excuse. It's like, no, dude, you didn't concentrate. Mm -hmm. And at least that's, maybe I'm talking crazy to no, myself, but no, I feel no, like, no, man, no, stick to sure. and concentration, that is the key. The people who concentrate the most win. Mm -hmm, for sure. You know? Yeah. So I'm just saying that's a super, and, and, that, and then talk about even, even with money. If you concentrate your, in, your, your mental energy on financing, it's going to come because you've concentrated that much energy, and that's all the shit is. Right. All, all money, everything is all just energy. So if you concentrate energy, your mental thoughts and capacities, energy into money, it is going to happen. Right. Like, like, as, as far as science, like, you know what I'm saying? That not even just, just energy, yeah, too much yeah, energy. Yeah, just atoms bumping into each other. That's just how this shit works. If you, if you apply some pressure, it's going to apply it right back. So, so let me ask you this. Why, why do we not like the pressure sometimes? How can, how, why do we stay away from it? Even though we know that if you get past the pressure, that's how you win. But you got to feel that. Why? It's like, oh, I, don't, I don't want to, you know, or I right. can't or whatever. Oh, what no. is that like natural feeling that makes like why do we have to feel like we have to overcome that feeling? Why do we have to do? Yeah, like yeah, you know, like willpower. Like why? Why? Like mm. why is life like? Why is life hard? Why do we? Yeah, like <laughs> like why life gotta be hard? Life so a fucking big ass hard. Question. <laughs> Wait, yeah, is that what I'm it today? <laughs> Here's the question, motherfucker. Why is life so goddamn hard? <laughs> I just want to wake up and go, hey, right. and be good. Right. No, you got to work. You got to fucking, no nigga. Get your ass up. You got to work. You got to wash your ass. Right, your magic Wait, I got to wash your ass. I just Every don't want to do it. <laughs> that shit just happened. Man. I know, I know, man. So, so that's the hit. Why is life hard, Derek? <laughs> Derek, please answer the question. Because I need well, to know. <laughs> um, I think... It's funny you say that though, because I think the creators of the world are trying to figure that shit out. They're trying to make that shit like not hard. They're trying to make the imagination be like just what it is. Like, man, let me just get right to that. Because it, it you, that's a good point. Because it feels like we are getting, it's getting easier. The way that I, I'm telling you, man, the way that I look at the shit now, I just compare, I compare cave art to like the metaverse. Like we just pretty much are doing the same exact shit. Excuse me. We pretty much doing the same exact shit. It's just that our imagination is metaverse level now. It's like, or the technology is metaverse level now. It's not our imagination. It's just the technology is allowing that, you know. But it's it's built from that time. So it's like we've really been practicing the same shit. Just just, just storytelling. Yeah, just storytelling and imagination and just applying it though. 
though that was them applying it with cave art type of shit. This is us applying it in this format. Yeah, but it's the exact same thing. Exact same thing. And we use money to kind of fuel that exchange. That's all. Isn't that crazy? I just try, man, ever since you brought that whole like all we're doing is telling stories in life. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's all this is. This, this, all that's what we doing. We telling y'all a story. That's all people are, have ever been attracted to is just like tell me a fucking story. Yeah, and, and and then it better be a good story. But the real thing about what I love so much about right now and the whole blockchain shit is that the the problem of before was that everybody wasn't allowed to tell the stories or they weren't having ownership of their own stories. Whereas this allows like NFTs circuits like that allow for the story to just be. You can own your own story. You can receive residuals off your shit. Whereas, every, whereas before, like you gotta get hired by the big company or work for the big company, and they get the residuals off of you, and you gotta pay them back, type of thing, you know. Whereas you can be the one that actually owns from the jump your own story. Yeah, it's like getting rid of the middleman. Yeah, yeah, that's like. But then there's people who profit off of being the middleman, right? True. So it's like, are they gonna allow it? Is there some people's argument? It's like banks right. make a lot of money off of us using them. They making it you know hard. What I'm saying? They, like, yeah. they are making it hard, but I think they're gonna have to succumb. They're gonna have to. It's, a bank ain't nothing but a, a person. So That's if all it the is. people, if other people coming in, gang, gang, crypto, which it is, which it is, get the fuck out the way. You are gonna have to do something. They said it's the fastest, sec- the fastest form of technology expansion ever. Right. Is this this whole blockchain technology? Right. Like I mean, it's, it it's, works. It's too vicious. It works. It's just open. It's just it's just decentralized. <laughs> now, how do you feel about that? Now. Like, do you think it'll always be decentralized? I have no idea. I'm, I'm a shit. I'm just a new player. I'm trying to get in. I like what I, I like. I said when 2020 happened, I came in hard and I signed up for like a blockchain course right away because I was just like, what's gonna be the next thing right, to move me that forward? Was a play. Out of that was a play. And right. I didn't know what the fuck it was, but I heard about it. and I was like, three month course. Let me just see what it is. I ain't even finish it, but I got the keys. All, all this shit is information. So. Don't be weary about finishing shit if you don't have to. Just get the information and get out if you need. But um, I found out about that, and that led me to financial technology and stocks and all this other shit. So it's just a natural play. But, I, you know, that leads you to crypto. That shit going to be the shit regardless. Right. So all the banks and stuff, they're either going to have to start incorporating that type of currency or they're just going to be missing out and go out of business. They're going to be blockbusting. Right, they're going to have to because we're going to do But I'm doing it right now. Like, I'm transferring money. Like, I'm wiring um, some money from my bank account to uh, the crypto. But it's funny because they like some like even credit card companies they don't accept crypto still or a, right, a payment like, yeah. for not not accept crypto type of payment but accept a payment for a crypto type of thing so a type of dollar so I can pay if I pay for a crypto with USD they won't accept it still because it's a crypto item so yeah, they so still got to get used to it but when I seen crypto.com at least as a company pay for the staple center yeah, it was, naming it, what license. was it 700 million dollars yes the staple center is not a small feat no, to pay for and the, the right. biggest naming license in history like you're you're trying to do a play here right right you know and and I'll tell That's you this energy. when I was in uh new yep when I was in New York at the I remember uh, they got the, the shout out to the new uh New York airport LaGuardia they like they got a new, they got this oh, it's shit, like they it, needed it yeah, right. <laughs> it was like the it was like the worst uh, the worst airport of all time. Yeah, Laguardia's bad. But no, they it's new. They did it. It's nice. It felt like the Aria. It was it was like hella nice. I remember thinking, damn, it was plush. But I remember thinking, I saw a lot of crypto.com. I saw a lot of cri- crypto like ads throughout the whole airport and, and, and Laguardia. Yeah, that's a big deal. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is they, a play. They're playing. They and, got the UFC license too. Right. Uh, when you look at UFC now, all that shit over there. And so it's, it's it's coming. It's funny because you and I know now because we we like doing the business shit. We know how this like when you put in certain plays, when you put your money in certain plays, you know what they're doing. They're right. putting this in your face for a reason, you know. Right. So like, and because there's data see, now, right? Yeah, because it's data, and they know behind the data what they're they're gonna plug this on your Instagram when you scroll your Google searches. Your YouTube, every single ad you see, everything. So they're already they know everything. It. You know crazy? what I mean? They but know the data. They're, but they know. They know what they know is the platforms that we're using. That's all they know. They know the platforms that we're using and how to tell their story using the platform that you're using. So if you got TikTok, how does TikTok people? How do TikTok people use that? And how do crypto? How do I incorporate crypto into that? How do I use a story to do mm-hmm. that? How do I do that for Instagram? How do I do it for people with LinkedIn? How do I do for that, that for these? We're on all of these different platforms. They just master the skills of how to tell the stories. So, and, but they're invested in it like heavy. And especially with people like us, we're in the sports, right? Especially basketball. You buy $700 million worth or, or what is it? $700 million? It's $700 million. You buy that for the Staples Center, which is already, that's like 
the for West 20 Coast. years right for 20 years right, and that's right. like the west coast of Times square right right right. you know what i mean right. so Staple center is it's like not a, a small a deal joke, right so i'm like in los angeles right. so i'm i was like they they're playing they're playing some chess over here yeah like <laughs> so it's like they know there's is this you yeah. wouldn't just they ain't no joke and they provided a platform for it too and that's just the first platform like when we'll go back when we get to the crib i'll show you some crypto.com excuse me crypto.com stuff but that's even just the first company. I'm imagining other companies providing platforms for it. So I'm just saying the crypto space is here. We have businesses and whatnot, and people with imaginations can have ownership within this space. This is a new space. This is like Web 2.0. Right. Like the newer version of this is Web 3.0 now. This is our time to really get in. Like on the, when e-commerce was a new thing, mm -hmm. this is like this is a new thing mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. This is your time to really get in, and this is a space where you can really own some shit. And it's right, and we're we're still early to it. And it's super early. All this stuff is super early. How many? What's the percentage of people who know about crypto? I think you knew that. Oh, I think you might have told me that. Uh, no, the stat that I remember saying was eighty percent of people who have ever bought Bitcoin have never touched it. Mm -hmm. So that means like. There's people from the jump that are like, I don't care how much it, I'm not is not leaving this, and that's what's giving the values because you could have took it out four hundred million dollars ago and you're not. Mm -hmm. You could have took it out, you know, a billion dollars ago and you're not. So like, what? And then that's what people are like. Wait a minute, this is getting for real now. There's people believe that it has value now. So let me ask you this question: Do you think is there is there a percentage of people that don't believe Bitcoin? Like, you think it's the whole always? Do Do you think we're leaning where more people know? Fucks with it versus more people that don't. Where do you think we're at? I think the younger generation gets the they get they get the they get it more. Do millennials get it? We on the cusp. We halfway don't get that shit. <laughs> right, right. We, see, I, I feel like we halfway don't get that shit. I feel like shit. like a little thirty year old might right, be like, right. Yeah, I we I have, heard about it. We halfway don't get that shit. But well, ch 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 check this out. I think because we went through it before with the two point oh shit. We think about it. the older school cats when you you ever play Fortnite. Or I any, haven't, but I know about the shit. I, when I was playing 2K, you get right. use the virtual m m currency. We're bu I'm buying virtual right. things for my character. Like you get made fun of, and I remember feeling like, oh, I can't have a brown shirt. So I like had to spend <laughs> the money to get like the, the digital character. Yeah, that's that's pretty. And, and I'm a grown man. Right. Bro. It was like last weekend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So my point is, this is no, this is this is a real thing. Yeah. You know, and that's just in the 2K right. community. You're talking about everything. The NFT thing is here, and it is for real. I love what you said, though. You just said, I'm a grown man, right? Who's going to be a grown man in 20 years? The motherfuckers who's playing Fortnite and right, all right. that other shit right. heavy, and right. they this is like clockwork is, to them. So they're going to make it happen, right? I've been doing Roblox since I was yeah. two and shit. Like, what right. you saying? Pass the bucks. Right. You know, so... This is like we got to look towards that type of thing instead of being ah, ah, I don't get that shit. It's always an old head. It's huh? always an old it's head. Don't say some shit. God damn! I, I truly and I hope I, I I pray that I'm not an old head like that. Just is like that. I swear to God, I really want to be up on shit. Yeah, just yeah, not, yeah. just not. I don't want to be combative to the shit. That's all. Yeah, I, people I just I, don't like. Yeah, I'm all, I'm kind of cool. I I'm like not, the young crowd. Yeah, I'm cool. Like I just want to. It's a story. We all just I'm passing on the story to y'all. Y'all take what y'all want. I feel it. like the, the younger people are better people. <laughs> like, I, I, I do. I Always. feel like the younger they are, the more like, yeah, we're going to do the right thing. And then until when you get older, you'd be like, eh, you know, <laughs> I hate everything. And I'm like, it's damn. Don't work. <laughs> and I feel like younger people tend to be more, like, positive. Yeah. It's like life hasn't whooped their ass enough. So I think the key is that life's going to whoop your ass regardless. Okay. But then how do you try to stay young-minded, you know? Right. Try to stay positive about it because I feel like, it's easy. You have to like actively work on staying positive because it, like life beats your ass. What's you causing us not to maintain that childhood positivity? Then you think as adults, and it's probably harder for you and I, right? Because to us, we're like it's pretty easy, <laughs> especially your ass. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But that's but true. let's that's try true. trying to think no, objectively no, no, for, sure for someone else. I get you. You know, like life's life's hard, man. And then and then a lot of times people wow. feel alone and shit. This is what they think. This is what they think. Yeah, that's what they think. Not, not me. That's what they think. They think life's hard, man. You, I gotta wake up. I gotta pay bills. You know, I'm with this motherfucker I don't like. I'm overweight. I got this problem, and and it's like they they look at it as, as as a reason to be like, man, fuck this. And that's like the energy towards the whole. You know, fuck it. Mm. Like, what, what I got to be happy for? I got all these problems. You know. That sounds very alone. That's what I'm saying. And that was the first thing I said. Lonely. Feeling mm. lonely, right? So that's probably why I think people... So you're saying we're living in a society where people are allowed un, to be 
in that mode of thought where they're just lonely. I mean, on an average, this is this is so. What we're doing is abnormal. As far as like how how we think, yeah, and how we're going about life, like maintaining that childhood. If you would say that in that way, you know what I mean. So most, I people would say would, most people would look at us. I'm gonna definitely speak for myself and say, damn, he's got a lot of energy, you know, like like positive and energy. And and to me, it feels kind of natural to want to feel like, why would you not want to be positive? You yeah. know, like why would you not want to feel good all the time? Yeah. I don't, to me, like why are you? Who wants to be miserable? I don't get that. I've never understood that. But like, so to me, it's like, no, it's how could you? It's, it's so natural. Yeah. But some people probably don't feel that way. Now, do you think that's just, are they born that way, or is you just think their environment? Like, what, what yeah. puts someone in a negative space versus a positive? I just, I'm trying to, I always try to think about, like, how could it be, how could we solve the pain point? <laughs> you know, so, like, what, what is it, what is it about the whole system? I don't know. I just think we all have greatness, and I think, uh, I think that the problem is that we don't have room to express our imaginations in a format that, like, is just conducive. I think everybody can do that. But we just don't always have the structure and the space to do it. Maybe it's a system that we like create for ourselves. You know, we don't have the time to have you know our minds be met or and shit like that. So, so sometimes it's on it's on the person. No, I think it most more so is the environment. Honestly, if you ask me, um, I don't think we create an environment. I don't really think we create an environment for now people. You talking about truly, as a people, right? Yeah, okay. no, no. It, 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 at least the environment that we have set up right now, it doesn't create an environment where people are. Um, Okay, they want you to, okay, it's, it's for thriving, excuse me. It's just in, not in a way that's for you specifically. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you want to thrive. Okay, I'll, I'll stop using like terminology that's go so crazy. So I'll say like for being a worker, you know, a part of the society, big part of the society is you being a worker. When you are trained from the time you're born to the time you're an adult, you're trained to be a worker. But we're not trained to be an owner at all. You know what I mean? So we, even when you go out, let's say you go to college, you get a degree and whatnot, you're trained to go get a degree so that you can do well at that job for somebody else, which is good. Perfect. That's part of the economy. You want to be a worker because you want to be a part of the economy. But you also need some type of function with, with, with ownership, which is not necessarily a taught thing. And I think that people who have a lot of problems, they don't have, we can fall into the trap of just like, I don't know what I'm just, I'm just going through a cycle. And I don't even know what I'm working for. Where's where's my liking? What do I have? Something, you know, what is my imagination gonna kick in? And what is that for me? I'll give you an example. My brother, he just got out of school. He just became a doctor. Um, pharmacy. Dope. Fucking dope, right? Um, he was like, bro, man, I'm 28. I've been in school forever. Like, I don't I don't really know myself though. Like, I don't really know what I wanna do. I don't really know what I like. It's like I look at you and I'm like, you, you kinda you know what you like, like and shit, and I feel like, but I'm like, trust me, I'm. This is a build thing, so I'm. Tr I, I thank you, but it is a build, <laughs> so <laughs> relax on that. But I, I appreciate yeah, so you. It's a big build. It's a big build. It's a real it's big build. That, but, but in saying that, like he he like he he's created security, which is wonderful. Um, but he still has to learn a lot about himself at an at an age where, um, he's just like, damn, I thought I kind of knew some shit already about myself, but like I really got to figure this out about what do I want to imagine and put out there. And so I don't think we have a society to where, and he's put two hundred and fifty thousand, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I should say, into becoming a doctor. That's energy. But now he's like, what energy? How do I put one hundred fifty thousand dollars into myself to do some shit that I can imagine and put together? Mm. So that's been a whole thing with him. He's like, man, I really got to find that. I don't know what that is. So we hang out and we we kick it and you know talk a lot and exchange ideas on that end. So yeah, yeah. man, uh, uh, that's a that's just a good point. Like. When you feel about who you really are, I think like to really get down to who you really are, you have to like really be okay with the fact that you might hear some shit that you don't want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like to to really be the the best version, like to really desire to want to fix something, or or to be a better person, or or to just to just strive, you got to really be okay with the fact that you fucking up. Mm -hmm. And, and, and maybe this is off point, but I heard this quote the other day that, that really, really put me in a good mood. It said, you're only a sum of all of your decisions up until that point. Like all of your decisions that you've made led you up to that point. Right, right, right. And that's like a scary and powerfully awesome, you know, it's, it's, it's like that's a dope thing to understand. Yeah. 
And it's like, damn, could you have made better choices in certain situations? You could have. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? Like, if you've been honest, like... Absolutely. And you got to be willing to to, add, to be okay hearing that. Some people don't even want to hear the question. I remember in my past, like, I didn't even want to hear... I didn't even want to confront it. Mm. I'm like, because I know I didn't... It's about, I don't even want to confront it. It don't even exist. And it's just like, no, I think the key is you're going to have to... Conf, you're going to have to face it. There's no other... There's no other way around fixing things other than to face them. Like, face... Boom, I'm here. And that's like the only way. That's the only way. Yeah. I've tried. I've tried all the other ways. There's no other ways to, to get there. You can try to sneak your way. And like, no, you got to face it. You try to crab walk your way. Through and there. the more you face that shit, that like, like life, life's like a cheat code almost. All of a sudden, your brain, your brain feels like a cheat code because you, because you, the more you face that shit, it's like the more like. You put, you put that energy towards and it. I, and that's probably what it is. Ultimately, yeah, exactly what it is. Like I'm just I focus that amount of energy into this specific part of my life, and it's like, whoa, right. And right. that's a good place to throw your energy is facing your bullshit. Mm -hmm. And we all got it. It's just you facing it. So I, I'm a firm believer in face your bullshit. Face your bullshit. But not everyone can handle that shit. So, so how yeah. do you get someone to say, well, how do I get there? Because I would say I'm on the, you know, I'm up there. I really want to hear all my bullshit. Not everyone can. So how do you help someone start to. Start facing Hold, their bullshit uh, and whatnot. Yeah, the kind of holding themselves, holding themselves accountable. And Being I know you were talking about early. Um, so I think it's a combination. I, I like to actually. I think we can combine some things. So I like what you said about consistency. What was the word? How did you phrase it? Concentration. Concentration. <laughs> concentration. <laughs> so let's say imagination and concentration. So I say, like, have an imagination. Have the biggest fucking imagination because that's all we've ever done. That's why we have anything that we have right now. So don't let anybody tell you to not have an imagination. You are a person, which means you need to have an imagination. You can't survive without one, right? So within that, you just have to concentrate on that shit. Mm. Hard as fuck. And, don't, and, and that's cool. Concentrate on your imagination. Mm. That's what you were made to do. That's how the human brain works. So don't be afraid to do that. And don't be afraid to put the energy, a.k.a. money, towards that. Right. Yeah, because, uh, so do you believe in, like, the so everything's energy, right? Yeah. Do you believe that, do you believe in the word lack? Like, can you lack something in, in, in a universe that, that is everything? Can I lack something? Like, is it, like, if it's Does just energy. Does the universe lack something? Yeah, like, can oh, you shit. lack something? I'm just, you know what I'm saying? I if, if the universe is forever expanding, right? Yeah. That means it's, I, I think, ultimately, in the universe, nothing is lack. Right. You can't have no lack. So even if you say, like, oh, I don't have money, well. Ooh, I like that. Well, think about this. That's a dope-ass question. You might make man, I ain't got no, you, yeah, yeah, I'm lacking money right now. Mm -hmm. But then if you're literally listening to this right now, think about someone else's reality where they're on the street at begging for, and they don't even got enough money to be on a phone or a computer. Right, so in right. their reality, they got you got plenty of money. Mm -hmm. In someone else's reality, you might not have no money either. So it all just comes down to your reality. And typically, it's not really if you're watching this, it's not a, a money thing, as much as it's about how you treat money thing. Correct. And how you think about money. Here's the thing, correct, especially correct, in the black correct, community, correct, but correct, I think correct. about just most people, I'm, just people in general. I've been doing a deep dive into money, and and like I'm like, whoa, it's so much more than just these things that we give away. Like it's so much deeper than that. And so how in the hell are we going to know anything about, we're going to have money, like people who don't have it, if you don't know nothing about it. Right. Because right. You, have, you have not placed any of your energy, you have not concentrated any of your energy on money. I think, okay, I think we have. I just think it's not been concentrated in the right way. We've been concentrating, our money, I think everybody has to mm. do something with money. We can't do nothing without money, right? But our money has just been a consumer. Mm. We've been workers and consumers. Like, as soon as Good we get point. our money... We go spend it and consume it right away. We just don't have any ownership in that or no asset in that. That's it. Like we're we exchange our money directly as soon as we get off work. We put that shit right back in somebody somebody else's pocket. Right. That's been the exchange that we know, love, and live by. And that's what we. As soon as we step out, we see a commercial or scroll through somebody trying to sell you something, which is part of the market. It's fine. I'm cool with that. But I need ownership on that side too. You got to be able to play on both sides, but you can't just be a consumer, which is what we're mostly used to. So, so and, and this is just devil's advocate. You know how Please I feel do. about this. Please do. What, what about if I say, what? that's easy for you to say, like, 
I got real problems, man. I got real bills. It's easy to say that. I got real bills too. Shit, I can say that too. Okay, I'm a person. So, so what I makes you think I could be up there with Nike in there? Why? What makes you think I, I haven't? <laughs> no, seriously. Somebody nah, just saying I feel this. You. What would you say? Like, no, I can. I, me have a business that's ridiculous. I, I'm not gonna. Nike has a mindset. They they got money, but they, it's more so of a mindset than anything. They they have energy and they put it towards a certain thing. I've always been a person that's done everything. I've always had a quality type of mindset. If you act, if I ask myself, so it's like I just feel like if it can be done by anybody, then I can do it. I don't care what it is. So, and I've always proven that to myself. You know, if all it takes is for me to structurally just manifest or uh, manage my money in the right way to get it done, I can go anywhere, do anything, and have anything if I want to. So you can really manifest whatever you want. It's just concentrating your imagination. Mm. That's it. You know, it's the same play we've been talking. So like, it's the same play we've been talking. I I, I don't. I just think that they. I think you overthinking. You need to have your. You need to respect your own imagination and not respect everybody else more than you respect your own. Cause that's what you do mm-hmm. when you're only a consumer. When you when you have, when you can go buy that shoe or whatever have you, whatever it is, or even a bill. I don't care what it is. Whenever you ain't investing in your shit, you gotta really understand that your money is energy, and you gotta mm-hmm. invest in your shit because they you're born from your mother being a consumer. That's going to be your play automatically. You have to work to be an owner in this world. So you need that play in your life. That's, and why not try to do that your whole life? Try to be an owner and just work through it. It ain't got to be, it don't have to hit right now. Just work through it. This stuff take time. Now, let me ask you this. How easy is it to get started off into that world? Not easy. I'll say it's more so. You got to, I'll say this. It's very easy. <laughs> but you got to, you got to just use your imagination. Just believe in your imagination. It's very easy, though. I'll say this. So when you mentioned Nike, they... I just got out of this digital marketing program with Northwestern, right? So I'm learning about how all the big wigs, like the professors are best friends with like the IBM and shit like that, right? Sorry to hit the table. Um, so I'm stop learning. Stop hitting the motherfucking table. Right, stop man. hitting the motherfucking God table. <laughs> Rules it and shit. Fuck but your table, man. <laughs> they got systems. They got si- All it is is they have systems in play. They got money behind it, but all it is is just systems. Because so this is what they would tell me at the, in these classes. They would say, what you do with this digital marketing stuff is you put it here, you put it there. You do this, you do that. Or you can just hire people to do it. And I'm like, oh, shit. So you're just telling, all I'm taking this, these classes for is to tell me the information, to tell me exactly what they do, which is just to hire the, the professionals to do it. So with us, we don't have money, like the layperson, to hire a professional that we think we don't have money to hire a professional mm, company. That's the key, right? A Nike going to hire a professional company to do their work, right? So they're going to post everything on their Instagram for him. A Snoop Dogg, even. He's going to hire every a, a company or whatever, a team, to do his work for him. Us, we can hire freelancers. This is a new age. We got the internet. There's plenty of people who work for companies that still do their businesses on the side. I'm glad you brought this up, actually, because I think we should like really tell people, like, um, even so specifically, like Fiverr.com. Mm. F I V E R R. This is or Up Upwork. I think it's another one, but we use Fiverr specifically. But freelancers, these people that work for companies, but they also freelance on the side, and they are skilled at what your imagination <laughs> needs. And right. it's it's base it's packages that are affordable for you. So they have basics, premium standards, and but your imagination can go anywhere. Right. You can be into comic book animation. You can be into, into anything, in, anything, into real anything estate, anything digital, anything digital, anything, any skill that you need. Just type it in Fiverr and, right. and find freelancers. That way you can actually set aside a, a budget and really figure out your imagination and really start respecting it. I think we see we people in our position. We need to start seeing things more. Nike, they see their shit all, all day, every day. Everybody sees Nikes, McDonald's, Coca-Colas, all of those. But we don't see our own shit enough. We need to start practicing becoming managers of our shit, of our own imaginations. And that's by hiring people. Don't try to like figure out right. the the what the who's not the hows. Who not how. Who not how. Not how to do this shit, but who what expert can help me bring my imagination to life. And it's still yours. It's still your imagination. Wait, and, and, and here's here's what's dope. Here's what's dope about that whole concept is that the way the world's set up, it's 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 simple to look elegant. It and is. It's, it's and like hard. like for instance, for instance, like like technology is getting stuff so much less expensive. Like for instance, the ring on the, the doorbells. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like 
Every I, every house has that now, but it, but in, in it's why would you not? Right. It's simple. It's inexpensive. You just do boom, bing, right. and now you got cameras. So it's like all these technologies are making the game much easier on all the levels. We all can look the same. I mean, look, I went to Fiverr. I went to a, um, um, a website manager and website designer, and I was like, look, I sent him a link to Patagonia. He was like, I want my website to look just like this. Did it. Done. Send him over to Printful. I want you to connect this company, plug into this, and make it look like that. Cool. Boom. Done. And that's all you got to do. And just your ideas, put it into an expert's hands, and just manage. We need to we need to focus on, we need to exercise the muscle of being a manager versus always being managed. What, what, yeah, that's a, good, that's a great way to think about that. Because what about the people that just don't believe they can? They're like, no, I'm not. There's some people that are like that. Like, to right. us, your imagination so like, is handicapped. To us, it's definitely like, what? I, I mean, I, I can, we can create anything, right? That I, but I know I think we're on the, on the high end of that spectrum. Mm -hmm. What about the person who's like, oh, I could never. Okay. Maybe you could never, but somebody else could. Mm. Put your money towards that energy that somebody else could. I could mm, never do a lot of the shit that I got that's on. That's a good Look point. Look into my website right now, prettycoolapes.com. I did not make one single thing on there. I had, But all of it is my idea. I did not write one thing. I did not create one character. But I presented all of this stuff in my imagination to the people that I hired to create what I wanted. Right. The year before this, I was trying to take, I was spending thousands of dollars trying to learn Adobe, trying to learn how to do this shit myself, and I was going nowhere. My website was up for a year, 2020, and didn't budge. Now, plush, because I put my energy, my money, towards people who knew what they were doing to help my so imagination. Let me, so let me, let me, what if you ain't got no money? This is the question. What's no money? You, who ain't, who ain't, no, got, who ain't got no money? Right, right, right. So, so, that's, so that's where I, I had to learn that lesson. The struggle, because the energy. It's That's not about because you got that energy because you've been you working. That, yeah, you're him, it's all you about money. energy, right? You got that energy. It's just that where have you concentrated your energy, your money, energy? Where did you put that? Concentrating your imagination. Oh, oh, you got that Starbucks every day. Oh mm. damn. Oh, you got that dinner that one night. Oh shit. You 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 fucking you you eat out two times. A week. Oh, you got those J's. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't put the ten percent away for this. Oh, so. And then that goes back to my original point is that we're all just a bunch of decisions that we've mm. made up until that point. Mm -hmm. So then you really start to say, it's like, damn, all those, not to look into the past too much, but when, to really understand how big of an idea this is, think about all those choices in your past that you probably knew that you should have made a better decision, but you didn't concentrate your, your energy on the thought, right? So you just kind of did willy nilly. Mm -hmm. Think about all the choices that you could have made that could have led to a better situation right here. Like for getting up every day at 6.30 for the last 10 years. Imagine, mm -hmm. imagine, if I, imagine if you drank water every day, no Coke, no nothing, no nothing, every day for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. You chose to drink the Diet Coke even one time. You, you used to, so you're just that one choice away. Sorry. <laughs> but you're just that one choice away. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like... You really are just a bunch of your own choices up until that point. So yeah. as powerful as that is, going forward, you are also th that many good choices away from whatever could your, be your reality in the future. Right, 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 right. So and, and, and I'm reading this book called Manifesting with Alignment. <laughs> You're trying to get my brain on. And what they, <laughs> I'm reading two books, and it's just crazy. Yeah, choo, choo, choo. Um, and what they're talking about is your... your we have more than one reality. Mm -hmm. Like my reality is different from your reality, but then my reality in 10 minutes is different from my reality now. Reality just means literally right now. And it changes every kajillion seconds, right? It's always a different reality. So then I'm like, you can prepare for your future realities, your future nows by making the correct decisions and the more optimal decisions you make, the the, the world literally is endless in your yeah. imagination if you concentrate your energy. So it's like it's all starting to really make sense. It's like oh shit, and it's starting to look at life kind of like this. Like but that's how you do it, but it, it kind of feels that way yeah. if you just concentrate your imagination or this. Yeah, and you can like finagle this shit. Yeah, I think I heard somebody say like we. I don't know. I'm gonna quote it wrong, but. Like right now, it's just somebody else's past imagination, you know. Mm. <laughs> like that we're just living in somebody's past, mm, you know. So yeah, if powerful. I worded that correctly, but but yeah, it's like somebody's thought process is just this is this is your thought process, you know. 
we just put, we, you know, and you put it together. You had this thought, and you put it together, and look what you presented. This is your imagination coming together. It's right before us. So. What was that that I texted you yesterday that was powerful? Actions are just... I forgot. Yeah. It, oh, look it up. Look it up. I got to look it up. Look it up. Because uh, I was like, how powerful is that? Let me see you you out. You remember when I texted you yesterday? Yeah, I remember. Let's pick it up. Oh, here we go. Actions are expressions of the mind. <laughs> I'm like, that's real talk, dog. That's real talk. That's all it is. So even if you, and there's different ways you move stuff, right? You can move stuff subconsciously. You can move, you can move stuff unconsciously. Like if you got an itch, you just naturally, that's right, unconscious right. or maybe subconscious. But then you can consciously, like, I want to pick up that phone. Now I'm conscious. And I'm trying to learn, there's different levels of conscious in, in being. And it's like, whoa, this a lot of us, we, we, we don't realize that the real, how important the reality is of now. Because there's, there's, we're yeah. always thinking about further realities. The real ridiculous is to worry about the past realities, because those don't even <laughs> exist no more. Uh, those don't even exist no more. Uh, Think about that. Like, like, logically speaking, why am I worried about that? I guess there's probably some benefits to worrying about the past. Like, you don't want to like, make the bad decisions, I guess. Well, you want to learn from the past. You don't want to, I don't want to say worry. Yeah, you don't want to, like, dwell. I wouldn't call it, I think dwell is yeah, different. Yeah, what, what am I trying to say about the past? Like, there, there's some wastefulness don't soak in the, about don't, it. It's like a soaking type of. Like, learn from it and move on. Yeah, you don't want to soak in your mistakes and shit like that. I think be more specific. Like, you don't, yeah, I, you I think go. you want to learn from shit, but everything is part of your story. It, everything is just added on to your story. It's a learning lesson, so. It's not to be soaked. It's to be, you know. So used. then, like, it's like, oh man, but I really fucked up. So it really is. Whoa! Once I, learned, it really is just a matter of how you think about shit. Yeah, I think to even let's let's use Travis Scott for an example in the whole concert. So I've been to a Travis Scott concert before in Wisconsin, in um, Milwaukee. Did we tell the people? Did they know? Tell tell everybody what happened. So Travis Scott concert, Astro World. What ten people were uh, killed? Um, yeah, uh, trampled, suffocation, all type of stuff. And, yeah, so I've been to a Travis Scott concert before. And, I mean, part of the festivity is, is for rages and stuff. But, I mean, just, I mean, that's not like the it's, first. Like, it's, it's high energy, right? It's high energy. But mostly it was, what was surprising to me, it was interesting, was, like, the whole compression thing. Because I hadn't experienced that, excuse me, before. And literally when he comes to the stage, it's, it's cool before, but when he comes to the stage, everybody starts like pushing in, it's like you really can't move, and it's like, oh shit, this is, damn, I could see this being like crazy, um, and I was indoors at the time too, but it was cool, fun concert and everything. But I was like, okay, I, I can see, I don't have to go to a concert. <laughs> I, I was like 28 at the time, I'm like I ain't, I'm kind of on the tail end, I'm like I ain't really got to do that. That's, <laughs> your that's, back, that's was your, I love Travis's music. Was your back hurt? <laughs> My back was. I was like, damn, this is. Like, I'm, I'm sleeping. I, I was exercising or something. You're like drinking coffee. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> But uh, but even saying in that, like he's gonna, so this was always gonna be a possibility with his type of production and um, his type of production that he's gonna provide. And it's not to say that it was gonna happen, but it's a possibility, you know. And, and, and here's what happen. sucks for him is because we just watched the documentary. Yeah, we did. Oh, man, I'm like poor <laughs> and guy. And it was like all about that. But I, I say that to say this, like, this is now just got to be a part of his story. So how he moves forward with that, he can dwell on it and say, oh, fuck, you fucked up the whole, this fucked up the whole, my whole theme of Astro World that I've been building since I was a child, this whole torn down park of mine. I had an imagination to build this thing to bring back to Houston that they tore down when I was a kid. And I, that meant everything to me. And now I get to rebuild it and provide it for people. And now it's tainted, you know, tainted with 10 deaths and shit. He can say, like, this is fucked up and I'm just going to give up now. Or he can say, you know what, I provided this type of thing and we just got to figure out a better way to, so that this doesn't happen again and make a point to put his energy towards mm -hmm. that and just make it like this is the, I'm the person that's going to do the rage and the shit, but in the safest fucking way possible and we're going to blah, 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 blah. So it's not the end of the world, but it's going to be part of your story. It just depends on how you're going to play it. Yeah, so it do, do, you think, it. do you think he's going to play it? How do you think he's going to he play it? He has to. If he wants, if or he, just be done? Yeah, if, unless you're just going to be done. And I don't know if you saw his interview with Charlemagne, but... No, I, I was just hearing about it. I did not watch it, though. Yeah, so I kind of saw his play on it, and I was like, that's... I see what, what was his What was his mindset? I mean, he was just more so like, I don't give a shit about the blame. I'm trying to help people, like, figure this shit out. Like, let's, like, I don't care. Let's heal. Let's go. Let's, like, whatever needs to be done. And, um, and we need... This is, he was like, this is a concert issue. It's only so much you can do, and I don't think people realize that. You're an artist, 
you got, I don't think most people have not realized 50,000 people in your face mm. and lights, camera, action, all this other shit. Like, do you really expect this man to see everything that's going on? But that's a, you know, that's here nor there. Um, but in saying that, he didn't even play on that at all. He was just like, no, I don't give a shit about what y'all saying or what I could, what do you think I can hear? I don't care. What's the deal? What are we going to get done? Mm. Right. I don't care. I got 10 deaths on my shit. I don't feel good about that. I'm not that type of person that's trying to incite that type of stuff. My, cause if you, if you know Travis, well, I'm getting off on a deep end, but if you know Travis, you know, he comes from like the kid Cuddy cloth and it's all about like the emotional, like, under, that's why like, so many young kids. That's why mess so many with kids him. fuck yeah, with Travis. Right, because right. That's, that's why Travis fuck with uh, uh, Kid Cudi because he like have this whole expression of like you saved my life and shit like that. Because it's like I can be expressive or I can just do my thing and express myself and all this stuff. So that's what his concerts are for. So it just depends on how he's gonna play it going forward, which I think he's gonna do it that way of like it being that safety net rage place where you can go towards uh, you know do your shit and have that expression. Yeah, how can it be a rage without... I, I can't even... like. I once saw a, a Snapchat... It ain't got to be that, though. Well, it can't be that. But isn't that where the energy... Nah, that was too much, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it was way too I don't much. care how you put that. Hey, and that's turn that energy down. That's what he's saying. He like, bro, I don't care like what it is. I've thrown hundreds of concerts. Ten deaths ain't never happened. So what the hell happened? Mm. This ain't this ain't some Travis Scott thing. This was a problem of the venue thing. Like we need to focus on venues. Mm. Like I've done concerts. I'm a ra- like this is my brand. I know I know who to hire and the ambulance and the safety and the mayors. I got all this shit protocol right, so right. that I can just perform. I've handled the who's and not the hows, all that other shit. Oh, uh, so that's it. that was his argument. Yeah, he's like this is a venue. Like this ain't the first concert to have deaths either. You know, so he was just more so playing it on that end. Like this is a. We need to really handle this shit as a as a performance art. And I remember watching that shit, thinking and, and going back to just his energy. Like, so I've been viewed a bunch of times online, right? You've, you've even been, you, we both been viewed a bunch of times online, and that's still a kind of like, like a lot of people seeing your face. You know, as a lot of people feel your energy, right? There's the energy that you've put out there. Right. That's the cool thing about digital technology, right? You can get your energy out a lot easier. But now they don't. Even though you're getting some of the energy, but you ain't getting the full energy of like me right here talking to you. Right, right, right. That's why if we both did Zoom, you can we could do it and we'll, we'll give a little energy because people get to watch it, but it ain't the same. Mm-hmm. It's a conversation in person. The energy is actually exchanging. Right, and right. And it's never going to be the same, man. I think that's what we try to grapple with. It's never going to be the same as face to face, but we're trying to make it easier for everybody to do it with technology. So that's just kind of what it has to be. And everybody everybody has an animation, imagination, but not everybody always has the resources. So, all we so you think that's what it's coming just, down to? Like the, the society is trying to find ways to get everyone to, to a place where all the, everyone's pain points going away? At least we're creating stuff now for it. Before it probably could be the, the only certain people can get that. So that's energy. where Web 3.0 comes in because now people can get in and actually do some real. Creating a decentralized format for it, yeah. So you can actually do some real good shit if that's what you're about. Exactly. What about the people who are like this? Though? Hey, how, how much time we got, Tom? Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, nice, a few nice, nice, nice. What do you say to the people who, the, the naysayers? You know, like, no, nah, you guys, you, you, Bitcoin's going down to zero. What do you say to them fools? Wait, hold on. Before, before <laughs> we even go there, check, check this out. Did you know you can take loans out on your Bitcoin? Yeah. And that's not tax the tax deductible, you know what I'm saying? And you. Oh and yeah, I think I did just hear something like that on like two days ago. So no wonder 80 percent of the people haven't touched it because best believe that they live in that good life is because there's now companies who have said, all right, well we fuck with Bitcoin, mm-hmm. so we. That's what I'm saying, man. It's <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So it just changed the game, and then but here's here's the question. Here's what? and there's the one argument. I'm like, I, I want to see how it plays out. Is that the government, who's obviously got their they fingers and everything, they're going to be like, wait, wait, hold on. Y'all ain't about to just keep getting money mm-hmm. while, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got, we had this. But the thing is, they have a, a coin. So they're already in it. The government already in it. So y'all better catch up. They so have I a said, USDC, said, USD yeah, coin. So what they need to do is attach the United States dollar to a specific coin. They do. They have one, USDC. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I don't think that's. United oh no, no, States, no! I, it's not. But it's not like. Okay, I see what you're saying. It's a yeah. stable coin, but it needs right, to be attached to the U.S. United States dollar. No, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's I already think, attached to it. I think they, it. They, they 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 mark the price off of it, but it's not attached to a dollar. Right, I feel you. I feel you. So they need to pretty because much you can't invest in it like you would invest in like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum. Right. So like whatever fiat money is out right. there, and for the people who don't know, for exchange purposes, probably. If I'm not mistaken, fiat currency that's, is yeah. just company that's backed by the government's word. Correct. And and here's the problem with that is I mean I don't know about y'all, but the government hasn't necessarily been a one hundred on how they spend the money and shit. Mm -hmm. or at least that's what the the narrative is. That's the right. story. That I've, and it's I funny believe. because I like I don't want to be one of those people that like like goes with a new narrative and shit like that. It's more so just about how I want to run my money and how my shit. It's, it's more so about that with me. So if I'm gonna get a better value out of my money by putting it into a system that 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 I have more control over, that's just the only my, my only play. Like, it's not about the government fucking up my money and all this other stuff. It's just like, no, I'm a person that know how to manage my energy, and if I can get control over it, I would rather have that. And especially, I could, okay, going through a bank, let's say, versus like, uh, let's say, because that's kind of the play right now, going through banks versus, you know, the whole, doing the whole crypto thing or crypto service. Um, there's so much, there's a lot of, interplay in there because uh, it's a financial system that somebody created so there's so much interplay that you have to go through inner loops but with, with a fiat i mean with the fiat currency system um but with the crypto system you just don't have to go through as many loops and they're creating systems now like like, like almost none right even in crypto.com right now they're, they're doing this thing that i just i'm about to invest in so if you invest in their coin which is called crow you get if you invest four thousand dollars into their crow you get um you get access to their debit card, right? The debit card gives you three percent cash back on all your expense on all your spending, right? So, let's say you put the money from your bank account, you put it on your debit card. Now, now you know how I do things with my spending, right? Everything that I spend, I use with my credit card. I pay that off every month, so then they, you know you get like two percent mm -hmm. cash back. Now, but what am I paying that off with? The cash that I worked for. What if all my cash was on that debit card and now every time I pay my bills, I'm paying 2% cash back on the credit and then 3% cash back on the debit. No, that's the problem. That's the real problem. No bank is giving you 3% cash back no, on nothing. nothing. Also, on top of you owning that Crow coin, you get 10% interest throughout the year. So I put $4,000 of ownership into that, a stake into that. I get 10%, I get $400 paid to me throughout the year now because I own, I have ownership in that. It's right. like a stock, remember? Crypto right. is like a right. stock. Right. So I have ownership in this money now and it's paying me 3% cash back as I spend. What bank is doing that for me? It's not. No, banks may offer you a savings account for 0.05%. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, to me, I don't get, I'm not trying to say the government fucking my money and blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to you be smart. You definitely can't have your money in the, in the, just the bank just chilling. No, that's just dumb. That's like the word. That's, like, that's inflation that's what, gone wrong. But most people have just in the bank what I chilling. Mean. Think we don't know. <laughs> we got to tell everybody. I feel like that's my job. We got to tell people. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It don't make sense. And it's like, man, and then even when I'm like getting gas, Invest. like, like when you, even, it's like if it's not towards, and here, hold on, we actually got to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I want to say that what we don't realize is that behind the scenes, they're just human beings. Yes. That, yes. That, oh, yes. They, they've just said, we're going to just put this energy yes. out here. Yes. And now because they have done a bunch of years and they've, they've figured it out and they're puzzled to their game, that's, but they're just human beings. It's only humans, y'all. Saying, ooh, I want to get this idea off. I, oh, here's a good idea, you know, and then they just figure it out. And they've been doing it, so that's why they're bigger. But we can all do that. Yeah. And, and, here's, there's, and here's why motherfuckers don't pay taxes. It's not because they're just evil people. They don't want to do their fair share. It's because they got into businesses, and, and, and the, the, there's huge incentives to create jobs and, and, and to create for the consumers mm -hmm. so, so, and to entice you to do it. Then they give you the tax break so you can get more of your energy that you put out. Mm -hmm. So I don't look at it as I mean, maybe I'm not saying there's not situations where there's some scandalous motherfuckers out there, but it feels like no, it's just like we, but we all have access, especially today. I don't care what you are, and it will it be a little harder. Okay, whatever, fine, but you can do it. Right, and I think in a new system that that works better. I think in the older system to where. Well, the newer system, hopefully it will work better. But the older system to where it's like you get those tax breaks and things like that, but you can or cannot put it into the 
into the people or or help the people at all if you don't want to. Right. Because at that point, it's like you just a stock. So you can be a company, you can push it into the people or not. But with the new shit, you have ownership. So you're not depending on that company to to do right or to to get tax breaks so they can do this and do that because they could get tax breaks and just take all the shit. Right. You know what I mean? But you don't depend on that with this type of thing because you become you become a competitor of that. You become a competitor of Instagram, of Facebook, of everything. And not necessarily a competitor, but like you have the access to be that. All of it. Yeah. And, and because of technology and fiber and shit like that and upward, yeah. you can you can get in the game relatively inexpensive right. and look good. So I would say to my advice, my advice to people would be to invest right now as much as you can into building your shit for web 2.0 because the more you do that is going to set you up. All the stuff they're building is for web 3.0. So if you have your web 2.0 shit together, you're going to be convertible if that's the right way to put it into web 3.0 very very well. So focus on your web 2.0 shit. Get your shit together. All your website stuff, hire people on Fiverr.com, hire freelancers, I should say. Specifically, hire freelancers if you have budgets and work with budget. But always work your money. Don't just let your money sit and don't just give your money away only. I believe in contributing to the economy, economy in both ways. Right. That's it. Where can they find you, Derek? PrettyCoolApes.com. That's where you can find me. <laughs> Web 2.0 through PrettyCoolApes.com, getting ready for the metaverse. You can find me at uh, at uh, caresnone.com. You can find me on my socials at, at Chris Cares None on all platforms. I'll be acting a fool. Hey, hey. It's, some, it's some pretty uh, adult content, both of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about that. We'll talk about the next episode. Yeah, uh, shout out to you. Uh, and as always, yeah. Cares None. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.